Hi there. My name is Sai, and I'm the Director of Product Management here at Google for User Protection. And my name is Shelly. I'm a Product Manager at Apigee working on API security. Welcome to our talk on securing your application against DDoS, API abuse, hijacking, and fraud. Organizations must protect against many types of attacks. Everything from bots to API abuse to fraud is hitting your applications on a regular basis, and the factors of attack are multiplying rapidly. In all of these areas, the threats just keep growing with the footprint of applications on web and mobile. Bot attacks are up 84%. API abuse impacts 50% of organization. Account takeovers increasing by 90% and fraud topping $24 billion in the United States alone. Now, we recognize the challenge of putting together point solutions to solve for all of these evolving threats. So we here at Google have come together to assemble a comprehensive solution to prevent application fraud and abuse. Our layered application defense consists of Cloud Armor, Apigee, and reCAPTCHA. And together, they can protect your application from abuse and fraud, no matter where the traffic comes from or where your applications are deployed. We have three layers to this defense. First, Cloud Armor defends against DDoS attacks at the networking layer. Second, Apigee defends against API abuse. And third, reCAPTCHA Enterprise defends against sophisticated credential stuffing, ATOs, and payments fraud on the client. Now, let me turn it over to Shelly who can help us learn more about Cloud Armor and Apigee. Thank you, Sai. Now let me take you through a short brief about Cloud Armor. Cloud Armor provides global scale defense against volumetric protocol and application attacks. It is built using the same technology and infrastructure that Google uses to protect its multi-billion user web apps. Only in 2022, Cloud Armor mitigated what was then the largest distributed denial of service attack in the world, with no impact to our customers. In addition to DDoS protection, Cloud Armor also provides WAF protection focused on OSP top 10 for apps, such as SQL injection or cross-site scripting. Users can also use Cloud Armor for geofencing to define allowed or denied regions, countries, or IPs. That way, limiting the access to the perimeter of the digital environment. Lastly, Cloud Armor is part of GCP and is highly embedded with the different capabilities to allow logging, monitoring, and alerting. Going a bit deeper into Cloud Armor, on this slide, you can see the various functionalities. First thing is L3, L4 DDoS protection, which is always on for all projects using global load balancers. It detects and mitigates network DDoS attacks like scene floods or UDP amplification attacks. We offer pre-configured WAF rules using the mod security open source. We have a custom rule language where you can create filtering policies to allow, deny, redirect, or rate limit connections. It's important to note that Cloud Armor can be deployed in front of any website or service to support hybrid or multi-cloud architectures. For bot management, Cloud Armor acts as an enforcement point determined by reCAPTCHA models for fraud and bot detection engines. For bot management, Cloud Armor acts as an enforcement point determined by reCAPTCHA models for fraud and bot detection engines. One of the more innovative capabilities we have is our Layer 7 Adaptive Protection ML-based functionality. It is designed to detect volumetric DDoS attacks. The system looks at dozens of attributes about the connections and how they relate to each other. The ML models good traffic and then notifies when highly suspicious patterns are emerging. These models have been tuned over the past five years on our web services, and now we are offering it as a feature to our customers, reducing time to detect and mitigate. Now let's move on to Apigee and API security. When we look at APIs, we see many stakeholders, users, and interaction points. We, as security people, also see a lot of risk. 
The end users of the APIs are users, and many times it's the customers of our customers. They could be the public or also partners that consume services. Usually, APIs are built and consumed by applications like our bank app or favorite coffee app. Next, there are the developers that build those apps and connect the different backend services through the available APIs. Most of our customers have API teams that manage the API platforms and guide the developers on best practices. And finally, of course, we have the data that includes sensitive data. In order to control the risk, one should have security visibility and control to each step in the process. It spans from threat protection that includes abuse detection through access control using OAuth or API keys with SSO management like IAM integration, governance that includes role-based access control, masking, compliance requirements. And lastly, data security with TLS requirements or encrypting functionality. Apigee offers many policies and services to meet these requirements and general API management use cases. We have a way to verify API keys, generate and validate OAuth access tokens, apply to rate limiting or API schema validation. We treat APIs as the products. That way users can define these products and govern which consumers can access which APIs with quotas and permissions. We provide analytics on top of that so users could understand how their APIs are being consumed. Lastly, as part of GCP, we are integrated into the wider platform and provide identity and access management and cloud logging functionality. Another way to look at Apigee is by having developer-aimed services, such as monetization, API catalog, API products, and marketplace. On the other hand, we have gateway services, such as security, orchestrations, and transformations. While serving multiple runtime environments, such as multi-cloud, SaaS, or on-prem. And all of these are served with strong analytics to monitor business KPIs, API performance, and different usage patterns. Advanced API security is an add-on on top of Apigee, which is focused on premium security services. It helps users design and build secure APIs. As being part of the API management platform, we are embedded in the entire API lifecycle and are able to provide visibility and control to API security configurations. Operate securely means how do you secure your APIs in runtime? We detect any abuse on your API logic or sensitive information and provide in-product dashboards or integration with SIM for further analysis and alerting. Lastly, we bring to Apigee the experience we have in Google with security and machine learning in order to improve your security posture. How do we do that? We are part of Apigee control plane. We run on already existing analytic data. This means that no additional data is required, so no new privacy concerns or approvals are needed. We see how APIs are configured and also know what are the best practices and right way to configure secure environments. And we integrate seemingly into the runtime to take action as an enforcement point. This allows us to react with close to zero latency impact on the API calls. We recently released new API abuse detection dashboards powered by machine learning models trained to detect abuse detection in real-time API traffic. The first two use cases we focused on are scraping and anomaly detection. We also added clustering algorithm to help reduce the noise and focus on the most sensitive and timely incidents. We group the detected API calls in clusters and give teams enough context to quickly understand and act on them. Now, let's look at a demo. Here we see the incidents in the last two weeks. We can also see the severity level given by the system. Jumping into the environment, we can see the list of incidents with more information, such as high-level description, 
severity, number of API calls, and the incidents time frame. Let's look at one of the incidents more closely. Here we can get more context, like the API proxies that were targeted, the pattern across time, the rules that were triggered, and the origin countries. For example, here we see the advanced scraper, which is the new ML-based Google Train detection rule. In case a security person wants more info, we have the attribute page that gives more details, such as the API products, the client IDs that were part of the incident, and the different IPs that triggered the API calls. Everything is built to help a security expert or an API owner to understand whether this is suspicious activity triggered on their APIs. Thanks, Shelly. Many of you know reCAPTCHA from the visual challenges, either in text or images, that you may have had to click through in order to access different web resources. That is the old reCAPTCHA, now more than 10 years old. In recent years, we built a new frictionless solution that installs on JavaScript in order to provide users and developers a completely frictionless experience. This new version acts by analyzing the behavior of users on the page. That is the CAPTCHA. Not only is it harder for adversaries to fool, since the solution is non-deterministic, unlike a Turing test, but it is also frictionless for users. This enables developers to put reCAPTCHA everywhere on their site and mobile applications to keep users safe with no additional friction. With this expansion, reCAPTCHA Enterprise is now available on 5 million sites around the world. This gives us unparalleled visibility into legitimate traffic as well as adversarial or fraudulent traffic across the vast majority of the internet, enabling our models to keep your web and mobile applications safe while not interrupting legitimate users. And this is really where reCAPTCHA Enterprise becomes a total fraud solution. We can analyze data from all traffic types, web, mobile, and WAF, and we can detect all major types of fraud ranging from fake accounts to account takeovers to payments fraud in one comprehensive fraud platform. Next, let me run you through three of our biggest launches for the year that really round out our total fraud solution for developers. Our first launch is for mobile native applications. To provide our best coverage on device, we now offer native Android and iOS SDKs. This ushers in a new era of detection for reCAPTCHA Enterprise, where we can integrate all the device signals seen by an application into a fraud score, in addition to the usual behavior that we've traditionally been able to see. We've also made this an easy install for developers, with the Android SDK installed through Google's Maven repository and the iOS SDK made available via CocoaPods, Package Manager, or via direct download. And now you can see the in-app instrumentation is small enough that we can include it right here on the slide, making it just that easy to install as the JavaScript version. Account Defender is our second launch that we are now able to bring to market this year. Traditionally, reCAPTCHA has been installed as a web-based login defense mechanism against credential stuffing and account takeover. However, we've expanded that to really cover the entire hijacking or account takeover risk workflow. It starts by observing users' registration behavior and the subsequent login events for anomalies. Then, we can check the username and password combinations against our global leak database to ensure they're not compromised. We will then enable you to trigger two-factor authentication with email or SMS integration right in the reCAPTCHA platform. Finally, if you do observe any abuse, we offer the Related Accounts API to help you find similar accounts to the ones that you know are abusive. And our third launch that I'm truly excited about is fraud prevention. We have expanded reCAPTCHA to the final frontier of the user experience, and I'm sure the most important for any site, the payments page. Fraud prevention enables reCAPTCHA to combine transaction and behavior data on sites in order to leverage the best-in-class behavioral intelligence of reCAPTCHA in concert with the payments instrument data provided by traditional providers. We found this unique combination able to capture and detect fraud that others have missed, as well as to lower friction on legitimate users 
who may otherwise have had transactions rejected. All right, so let's move on with a live example of what it looks like to install and use reCAPTCHA Enterprise on your site. To get started, all we really need is a project name and a domain. Type those in, and then just click Get Started. It's just that easy. We've automated all the typical provisioning processes that will happen in the background for the developer. When it's done, you'll have a fully provisioned project with the reCAPTCHA API enabled with 1 million calls a month at your fingertips. Now you are ready to go directly to the Cloud Console. Now we're in the Cloud Console, we've provided a demo embedded into reCAPTCHA Enterprise. So after you sign up, you'll be able to use it exactly as you see here today. To get started, just select your preferred language and it will automatically deploy the project for you. This project is a live web application. It has a front end, demo website, and configuration of the back end to call reCAPTCHA to score a user interaction. When it's ready, just click View Site. Now, let's take a look at the source code. On the front end, we have the JavaScript installation that monitors the user interaction. And on the back end, we can see how to form the request to the reCAPTCHA server. And that's really all there is to a proper implementation of reCAPTCHA Enterprise. Now that it's installed, we can see what it looks like running on a live site. This is a sample login site where a user enters the username and password and then clicks login. In the case of a legitimate user, nothing happens. There's no need to solve a challenge or add any additional friction. All that happens is that reCAPTCHA observes user behavior and relays a score to you, the developer, to make a decision on next steps. In the case of a fraudulent interaction, reCAPTCHA will show you the low risk score and the reasons why we believe it to be a risk. In this case, we believe there's automation happening on page. And this would be where you would trigger two-factor authentication, step up, or password leak defender to check this user for potential compromise. Finally, if you put reCAPTCHA on a payment page, it can look at the payment details in combination with the user behavior to make a judgment on the risk of that transaction leading to a chargeback or fraud in real time. When we enter the card number and click Buy Now, we can see the result to the left. This is scored based on all the aspects of the proposed transaction, as well as the on-page behavior. This demo site contains all the examples you need to see how reCAPTCHA can work to protect your site from registration to login to the payments page, all with no user friction. And now let's look at the console for analytics. You can see the current health of your site and any attacks that are occurring. We have total number of requests and a time series graph of requests received. And down here, we have a threshold recommendation. Now we know there's always a trade-off between blocking bad users and adding friction for good users. So reCAPTCHA provides developers with the flexibility to continually tune the score thresholds on where to enforce based on what's best for their application and their users. Developers can also simulate different thresholds to see the impact on their block rates. This will give developers a sense of volume for malicious activity. The second graph here shows visual CAPTCHA challenges that are passed and failed. All right, in just four minutes, we showed you how to get reCAPTCHA Enterprise installed and protecting your web and mobile applications from registration to login to payments. And that concludes our three layers of defense for web applications with CloudArmor for DDoS, Apigee for API abuse, and reCAPTCHA Enterprise for credential stuffing, ATOs, and fraud. If you'd like to learn more, you can use the QR code on our screen to view our application defense solution. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.